Hi, welcome to the Virtual State Fair. My name is Christina Roloffs and I am a shared naturalist between the Iowa DNR based out of Prairie Rose State Park and the Shelby County Conservation Board. Today we are coming to you from Springbrook State Park and we are at one of the original CCC structures and as you can see I brought with some snakes today. The snake that I have here, this is a milk snake. Uh, this milk snake actually came from Makokata Cave State Park. They are called a milk snake because they used to be found a lot in dairy barns and people believed that they drank milk straight from the cows. Obviously, that is not true. What they were after in the barns are the rodents. So they would eat lots and lots of small mice and that is what I do feed this one. We have about 30 different kinds of snakes in Iowa. Milk snakes, you tend to find them in little more wooded areas. They're not the most common snake we have around, but you do occasionally see them. They exhibit a great adaptation. They look a lot like a coral snake, and coral snakes are poisonous. Milk snakes are not. So there is a saying that goes, red next to black is a friend of Jack, and red next to yellow can kill a fellow. And that is one simple way to tell apart the poisonous and non-poisonous kinds. But we, of course, don't have any coral snakes in Iowa. We do have some rattlesnakes, but they're not super common. I brought with me a total of five snakes. So I'll move on to another one. The pillowcase is the easiest way for me to transport these, for the most part, my bigger ones, just because it's not very easy to carry big, huge aquariums around. So I'm going to show you one of the smaller snakes that we have here in Iowa, which is also one of the most common snakes we have here in Iowa, and that is a brown snake. You can see he's just a little guy. The biggest that these guys get is about 13 inches, and they have such great camouflage that a lot of times people don't notice them when they're out for a hike. They look a lot like a worm, and that is what I feed this little guy, is worms. They also would eat a lot of snails out in the wild. You'll notice with a lot of my snakes, they are sticking out their tongues, and that is how they smell. Snakes do not have a good sense of vision. They can basically see things move, so they rely a lot on their sense of smell to tell what's around them. And what they'll do is they stick out their tongues and they taste the air. It goes to a special organ called the Jacobson organ, and that is where their sense of smell is located. So they always are checking things out around them. Snakes, of course, are cold-blooded. We do have a little bit of a cool day today, so they are probably very happy to be in my hands. So that way they can absorb the heat from me. So one of the funny things this little guy will do if it is scared is it will blow itself up. So it'll make itself get as big and fat as it can and try to make itself look big. These guys also will spray. Garter snakes are notorious for doing that, but little brown snakes also do that. And it's kind of like they go to the bathroom on you and it smells awful. So I do have a garter snake with two. This garter snake I have not had for very long, but so far it has been a pretty good snake. And we do have a few different kinds of garter snakes here in Iowa. Um, we do see a lot of this kind as well as the red-sided garter snake, at least on the western side of Iowa. And they eat a lot of worms, a lot of insects. They also will eat small mice, so baby mice. They are great to have around your gardens for pest control. And this is one of the snakes that does have live babies. Most snakes, they lay eggs. They find a warm and damp place for them to leave their eggs, and the babies are on their own. With garter snakes, and actually with little brown snakes, the mothers have eggs. It's just that they keep them inside of them. And when the eggs hatch, then they release their babies. Garter snakes can have a lot of babies, too. I once had a garter snake that had 88 babies. A lot of the other snakes that lay eggs, it's usually a way smaller number. I think the most that I have seen for snake eggs in an egg-laying snake around Iowa is about 25. But garter snakes are our most common. They, I think, are the only one that is not protected by law. 
Most other snakes, it would be illegal to pick them up and keep them or to kill them. And so I do have a permit for all the snakes that I have. And this one just recently shed its skin, so its color looks really, really nice. This next snake is a little bit bigger one, and this is one that we do see in wooded areas more often than open areas. And this one is a black rat snake. I have had this snake for almost 19 years. And this one I know for sure is a female because she has laid eggs for me before. So she is just about ready to shed. Uh, typically, we will see a lot more reddish coloring on her but like I said, she's about ready to shed. As snakes grow, their skin does not grow with them. So it's just like our clothing that as we grow, our clothes get too tight and then we have to get bigger clothes. With a snake, they have to completely shed their skin. And if you can see her eyes at all, you can see they look just a little bit cloudy. A few days ago, they were just about completely opaque. They looked completely gray and it just shows she's about ready to shed. This is a kind of snake that does like to climb. And actually one of her favorite ways for me to hold her is just to let her wrap her tail around my wrist because it's just like a tree branch. They do get their name rat snake because they do eat rats. They are constrictors. I do feed mine mice and I do feed mine rats. I raise both and a lot of times I'll give them small rats. So their teeth are like very rough sandpaper. It's just enough to grip the mouse or the rat. So they'll bite it, they'll wrap around it with their body and squeeze it until that mouse can't breathe anymore. And then after the mouse dies, they will swallow it whole. And they make sure that mouse is dead because then of course the mouse could fight back and bite them and cause damage. So they do that to help them stay safe. So since I am taking care of the snake, she could probably live to be easily 25 or 30 and I'm, she may be well over that. I don't know how old she was when I got her. My last one is probably one of our biggest species of snakes that we have in Iowa. And it is a bull snake. And I've had my bull snake for probably about 12 years. And with sometimes bull snakes can be very, very aggressive, but she is the biggest baby. This is another one that I know for sure is a female because about every year for the last about eight years, she has also laid eggs for me. Her leg, eggs, of course, are not fertile because she doesn't have a, a mate with her. So she's my big girl. So bull snakes, a lot of times people will see fox snakes and mistake fox snakes for bull snakes. Uh, I did not bring my fox snake with today. Fox snakes have very similar markings, but a fox snake, they have a rounded nose, whereas a bull snake has a pointy nose. And you can see she has stripes that go through her mouth. Fox snakes do not have that. And a fox snake has a checkerboard pattern on their stomach. And you can see she's got a pattern on her stomach, but it's kind of random. So nothing too consistent. And also her spots start out black and then fade to brown. Whereas a fox snake, it's the, the spots are brown all the way down. Uh, the cool thing about a fox snake is they sometimes get Mickey Mouse spots too. So you'll see ears and a little face, but bull snakes don't have that. But like I said, the coloration is very similar and both of them will pretend to be rattlesnakes when they are scared. They'll vibrate their tails back and forth. And if it's next to something, like a rock or under some dead leaves, it really does sound like a rattlesnake. So there are so many different cool adaptations that snakes have. When you're out and about, just make sure you're out watching. They, of course, are going to be way more afraid of you than you are of them. So just give them their space, let them move on, and just get outside and check out the other things you can see.